having the opportunity to film with Mark Rutherford up in Alaska and work on this first descent project was probably one of the most rewarding experiences of my life. We filmed for about three months in total, spread out over three summers up in the bush. And we both agreed that we were filming in some of the most beautiful country either of us had ever seen. You know, all the different trips that we did were all really physically demanding, but I think the most challenging aspect of traveling in the bush and what we were trying to accomplish was trying to document what we were doing. Particularly the earlier days when it was just two of us, it just took a great deal of effort to try to document everything and then to try to accomplish a first ascent and be safe. I guess from a filming perspective, the most challenging aspect of the project was just operating under extreme conditions and away from any sort of power source for prolonged periods of time, especially once we started shooting with HD and whatnot working with files that needed to be put on a hard drive every night. So we ended up dragging along a lot of computer equipment and hard drives and then solar panels. We were very restricted in the amount of gear that we could carry into the bush. And therefore, because we had so much camera gear and we had a camera crane, a lot of times we had to leave out food. You know, we had, we had some food. We had a little bit of top ramen usually and some granola and, uh, you know, a little bit of backup food. But for the most part, we relied on salmon which, uh, which was great when the salmon were, were plentiful and, and we were able to catch a lot of them. I think after day like 28 or 29 of a pure salmon diet, Mark and I started to try and get a little creative. So we started making sashimi out of the salmon, um, not knowing that you're actually supposed to flash freeze it typically before you eat it because they, uh, the salmon can have worms and can turn into sort of an ugly situation. So we thought we were pretty clever, but um, it turns out it turns out that you probably want to flash freeze most of your salmon, or you're kind of rolling the dice. You know, I, I'm sure there were times where Mark wanted to throw the throw the camera crane into the river, and was wondering why we had a crane that weighed 40 pounds when we could have been carrying food in its place. We spent a lot of time and a lot of weight using equipment that maybe only produces a one or two second shot. But in the end, I feel it was worth it. We got pretty creative using, using different zip lines and pulleys and trying to achieve different effects, most of which didn't work, but it was fun to, fun to attempt them in the bush. The second year when we went back with that larger group, it was the most enjoyable out of all the trips that we did. Having Mike Cusio on that second trip was huge. Um, he is just, an incredible filmer and a really strong, really strong outdoorsman. Uh, we were a little nervous having him on the trip initially due to the fact that Mike had a pretty serious injury just a few months before. He launched himself off a huge tabletop on his tele skis and broke damn near every, every bone on the left side of his body, including his femur. But he's such a strong kid that he, he pulled his weight and you know, never complained once. It was a huge asset to the trip. Every time that he grabbed the camera, he seemed to pick up some really beautiful shots. And uh, it was just incredible to have him as part of our team and to help with the filming effort. Mark Rutherford and I spent a great deal of time talking about how we could produce a film about a first descent in Alaska in about a pretty specific area without feeling like we were gonna draw too much attention to the watershed. So we decided early on that we were not gonna ever use the name of the river publicly. And I don't think we've told the name of the river to more than two or three people actually. Um, and we've worked really hard to try to keep that quiet in hopes that it won't draw too much attention to the area. But it was an incredible project to work on. And you know, I can't believe it's actually finished. It's taken about three years. And I think Mike and I learned a lot about filming in the bush and the challenges of trying to document a journey when you're away from, away from civilization. I think everyone involved walked away from this project with such a great appreciation for the land that we traveled in and totally in awe of how amazing the entire experience was. And I think the fishing had very, very little to do with the quality of our experience. The beauty of the landscape and the camaraderie amongst our group was what really made it a success for us. And hopefully that shines through in the movie. Uh, just such a tight group, and we just had so much fun every single day, even when it, you know, even when it sucked and it was raining and cold, or 
we were in the middle of a huge portage. You know, we just uh, we just took our time and we had a great, we had just a great time.